all seems remarkably pointless now, but I think college has a habit of doing that. Everything feels incredibly important in the moment and progressively more irrelevant as the months and years pass after graduation. Time and distance make it harder for me to understand it. Questions that didn't seem to need asking at the time jump out at me now. How did it start? Some frustrated undergrad with delusions of grandeur polishing his spurs before applying to join the CIA? As if the CIA gave a shit about your ability to outsmart another bunch of understimulated college kids with nothing at stake? Well, I shouldn't say nothing. It mattered. But it's different now. Back then, the betrayals were personal, not ideological. Just because they happened in college doesn't mean they didn't matter. It was just more black and white. Hey, Rob, look at this. Look at that poor little shit over there. Yeah, it must be one of their advanced reports. Oh, those high school kids, they try to prep to take our jobs? Yeah, that's all BS. The empirical evidence that justifies this analysis is weak and lost. They end up having to relearn everything over again anyway. How's this a whole different world? Oh, you and your studies. You act as though you're going to make director one day. Oh, screw it. I say we let those uppity analysts have their studies. If those stupid molar you bastards want to mess around with kids, let them. Right. Can we wrap this up? Colonel Joshua was kicking my ass. Call it in. Okay. Alright. Nothing at all? Okay. I hope you should have passed that on. Alright. Bye. How are we think it's Ben? Oh. Hey, Jim. Rob says hello. Tell him he can't date my sister. Pass that up. You do that, take it easy. Alex, I've got your briefing. You look like hell. Physics midterm. Ah, all right then. So what do you got for me? Not much. Robin's act didn't see anything. Again. Uh, right out in front of Moeller where they got their heads up their asses? Our friends over there have kept pretty quiet the last few weeks. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Anything at the usual hangouts? Zilch. We did get that Moeller. The freshman. You producing yet? It's not in far enough. They haven't given him any analysis work. Mostly field work studying us. <laughs> What, like that's not even tell of the century? Apparently not. Regardless, he seems to be holding up pretty well. Good, good. Uh, maybe a couple months down the road he'll start producing. So, how was that physics midterm? It was actually pretty good. Thanks to a couple bottles of these and your notes from last year saved my ass. I live to serve. So you're telling me we have nothing new, no new prospects, no kids from high school looking for an orientation. Just so happens that your brother decided to grace us with his presence. Hell, oh, brother. Uh, give him a tour of the place personally, just make sure he doesn't break anything. Hi, Kathy. My brother. Christ. I told my supervisors a thousand times, one of, the, one of the field agents blew my cover. No, no, you did. Could you 
past that you already practically had a seizure when you happen to recognize one of the field agents passing by. They wouldn't have noticed anything if you hadn't put on that little ragdoll ballet in your seat. Cut it all wrong, dude. This is your own mess. Huh? We're cleaning it up, but we need to be compensated for a considerable expenditure of time. Lower <laughs> University of Politics is not tolerated. Freshman, we just joined. You think we start out getting our first choice deployment? We're certainly qualified. That means nothing. They don't hire you unless you can do the job. The only way to distinguish yourself is experience. Alright. Hey, you see that girl running? Yeah, one of it. She's in an awful hurry. Your point? I'm sure I ran to get here, too. She's not running surveillance. Maybe she overslept? Yeah, I bet she's new. I've certainly never seen her before. Big deal in the school of 7,000. Why not call it in? Fine. I guess I can't hurt anything. 387. Justin, right? Yeah, listen, just spotted a possible new student. Female, tall, long blonde hair, wearing um, khakis and a red t-shirt. Says Bazinga on it. Yeah, from the show. Right. Okay, we're gonna wrap it up here. We both got class in like 20 minutes. You too? Yeah, we can't spend the whole day out of class. Alright, thanks. Bye. I hope you didn't waste that poor bastard's time. <sighs> yeah, me too. What's wrong, Ben? You look like you're about to have an aneurysm. Give me a real ball buster here, Jim. The, the new girl. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm sure you can handle it. If you need any help, you know where to find me. Thanks. We might need it. Come on in. Why do you bother? Reading the news? Yeah. It helps me keep a sense of the big picture. You work this job too long and you get bogged down in all the little bullshit details. Alas, my job is all about bullshit. <laughs> Which is precisely why you don't read the news. Right. Listen, did someone tell you about the new girl? We heard someone new? No, no. New to the college. Mm, no, I hadn't heard. Where'd she come from? Well, you. No shit. No shit. I'll be damned. You got somebody we're gonna file up on her? Yeah, man. Good man. He'll be sitting in your chair for long. No doubt. Does he have anything on her yet? Strangely, not much. She was an A student while at Moeller, attended for the last two and a half years. Can't find a high school. Probably moved from out of state. Is she cute? I believe the description was something along the lines of. Tall, long blonde hair, somewhat attractive. Some such nondescript nonsense. Surprised we got anything on her at all. Well, we only had two new students last month, and one was a guy, so I suppose we got lucky. Sounds like it. What's her name? Ah, uh, hell. No. I can't remember. I'll go ask Ben. Name's Amy Phillips. Ben showed me a picture. His description was about right. Said she was a junior. That's right. What exactly are you planning? Never you mind. Send me Ben's report when he's finished. Already planning on it, you pervert. Eat me! Ben turns in his report.
That old hag Saunders practically dragged me into her office after class. What for? That little son of a bitch Alex Johnson was talking in class. When his chatty little friend said his name, she confused him for me. She hates me enough as it is, so that was enough. Poor bastard. I managed to get out of there without her learning my name. He didn't find very much, did he? Apparently not. She is cute, though, don't you think? Whatever. She looks clean. Let me know if he finds anything else. Alright, meantime, I'll have someone file that. Remember, this is your op. I'm just here to observe and assist. If you need to give me an order, just do it. Understood, sir. Are you supposed to be a cheerleader? Does it matter? I guess not. Is it set? It's on. Yeah, go ahead and say something. Hey, boys. <laughs> yeah, it's working. Uh, where's she dropping her ears? Oh, hell. How about the money? She can't just the and wipe the slide right off. I got this. I give me the money. Alright. I got some gum. I came prepared. Alright. Sure to hold the bike down. Don't let it fall off. Don't want to be fumbling around in your pockets. Understood. Remember, if anything goes down, I got your back. I'm not going to Alright, Tyler. I wanna know everything that happens as it happens. Give me the play-by-play. -play. Alright. She's walking. She's walking. Walk, walk. Alright, she's inside. Um, okay, she's greeting them. She's getting sexually harassed. Nate, is everything kosher? We're clear. Still inside. Should I think she dropped the No, no, okay, she didn't drop the mic. Good cover. Alright, she's planted it. Okay, she's leaving. Shit, they've got agents. Abort, abort! They're taking her out the front. They take them out now. had agents in the locker room before we got there. Our agent was all shook up. Didn't see it coming. Could you have expected it? I'm not a field agent, Alex. I don't know what looks suspicious on the ground. You were a field agent for three years. Ask yourself that question. Maybe. But we're not going to hold it against her. If only because Muller doesn't usually pull shit like that. She was just careless. Yeah, you have your answer. At least Nate got to scratch his itchy trigger. <laughs> Always a good thing. Of course. What's that? Remember Amy Phillips? The molar transfer. What about her? She applied for a job. Oh. So I'm looking at your qualifications here, and it says you took four summer courses on computer security? That's right and two on U.S. and Soviet spy operations. I did. For curiosity's sake? My uncle worked with the Department of Defense. It also says here you wrote a paper on the Soviet counterintelligence and deception scheme known as the Trust that ran in the 20s, correct? That's right. Well, you appear qualified, so I'm going to dispense with the nonsense and hire you now. Great. As an analyst, you will report directly to me. I pick out what's important from what isn't and deliver it to Alex. 
also send the sources you'll be processing. Any questions? Oh, sounds good. Your login code will be on your desk when you get in. I'll see you tomorrow. Boy, that was something, wasn't it? Quite so. You read Deception, didn't you? I nearly crammed down that threat. Oh, but your whining was good, wasn't it? I suppose. The trust, huh? That was my favorite part. Agreed. The video the uncle was impressive. I wonder if it was actually true. Well, even if it wasn't, it was an interesting little fact to entertain us. I can respect that. Of course. A little resume padding never hurt anybody. Jesus, Jim, what's wrong? Our funding's gone. <laughs> Alright, where did it go? Apparently my parents got tired of sinking money into my online business venture. <laughs> Christ. What the hell do we do now? I suppose we'll have to get school funding. How in the blue monkey hell do you plan on pulling that stunt? We worked a few favors for the dean, if you recall. Oh, yes. Concealed his indiscretions. Saved his job and his marriage at the same time. I should buy some leverage. I don't know, these political types have a tendency to be a bit fickle. Bring the carrot. I'll bring the stick. You know, Jim, for an analyst, I always thought you were rather too fond of brute force. Say, let me. I think quite. How many damn appointments can you have? Apparently, quite a few. Dean Williams will see you now, boys. Thank you very much, ma'am. Why are you so damn quiet? One call means a lot to these people. You know that. Still, a simple thank you should have sufficed. Just erring on the side of caution. Whatever. Thank you for agreeing to see us, sir. Yes. Thank you. Always willing to do you kids a favor. Please sit down now. <clears throat> That's uh, what we came to talk about. Oh, really? <clears throat> what can I do for you, gentlemen? We need cash. What for? Sir, I think you know exactly what we're talking about here. Yes, that. My parents were previously paying the expenses of our operations, but they are tired of pouring large amounts of money into my startup. We need $50,000 in school funding. $50,000? Your parents were giving you that much every year? Certainly not. We're acting on a skeleton budget as it was. Boys, I'm, I'm sorry, I can't do that. Sir, we've earned the university a million a year covering Mueller and false reports of corruption. You know that money would have gone to them otherwise. The least you can do is give us five cents on the dollar. No, I'm, I'm sorry, there's, there's nothing I can do. You're full of shit. You don't want to be reasonable? Fine! That little favor of ours is going to bite you right in the ass if we don't get this money. And you and I both know that your job won't be waiting for you when you get out of it. So let's see you stop trying to play us for fools and give us the damn money. <clears throat> I, uh, I suppose we could send some money to your computer club? Very smart, sir. Was right. What you working on? Jim has me plugging leaks. Uh, wow, hot damn, you move fast, don't you? <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I know it's a lot to trust for a rookie, and I'm honored, really. But it's painfully slow. True. So, Amy, what do you do on Saturday? Why do you ask? I'd like to get to know you better. To see why Jim's placed so much faith in you. Is that standard procedure? It is for all the bullet transfers. Oh, really? Do you get many of those? Just you. Ah. So, are you busy? No. What are we doing? Are you a vegan or anything? Hardly. Good! Then I know this burger joint over on University. I think you'll be like noon? Sounds fine to me. Great. So, Amy, what the hell do you do for fun? Reading, mostly. Reading what? History books, mostly. And I dabble in a bit of classical fiction. 
classical fiction like the Iliad. More or less. And you? Uh, I like reading, but I'm more of a television and video games kind of guy. I might have guessed. I'm hurt. <laughs> Five minutes and I'm already being judged. <laughs> so, what made you transfer out of Muller? Um... I had some bad experiences. Bad experiences? Yeah. I didn't have the best time. What happened? I don't want to talk about it. Okay, I won't ask again. No, it's okay. Let's just talk about something else, okay? Okay. How's your date? Oh, shut up. I was curious. Bullshit. You like this girl. Nah, she's too bookish. <laughs> what? It's the stupidest damn reason to not like a girl I've ever heard. In fact, it's so bad that you have to like her. But what about your disdain for girls who like art class? You wound me. It's completely different. <laughs> oh, now who's talking bullshit? They are universally empty-headed. Some would call it culture. Alex, these are not girls gearing up for a PhD in art history. They like to play with pretty colors, that's all. Now you're just stereotyping. Yeah. Oh, I know. So we're gonna drop it? Good. Uh, what do we got today? Fat lot of nothing. It's a Saturday, man. Did you expect something else? Well, seeing these lazy assholes work on the weekend isn't entirely unheard of. Bloody unlikely. Funny, eh? I'm just surprised he's paying to addict me to caffeine. Maybe I'll ease his pain by starting with the Sprite. Jim, what? Do you know anything about someone leaving me a message? No, but ten bucks says it's Amy. Oh, come on, I'm not that good. Twenty bucks. Fine. Alright, people, I think we all know how our last field out turned out. Make sure it doesn't happen again, okay? Good. For those of you that don't know, this is Amy Phillips. She's our newest analyst, and it's thanks to her that we obtain the intel that makes tonight's mission possible. She knows more about it than I do, so I'm going to turn things over to her from here on out. Our sources have led us to believe that the personal assistant to Mulder U's assistant provost has been having an affair with the football team's defensive coordinator just so happens that they're both married. If we can obtain proof, we can use it against the assistant to get him to give us confidential molar files. Did you say him? Yes, the assistant is male. I know where this line of inquiry is going. And the coach? Also male. Oh, Jesus Christ. Don't tell me I have a goddamn homophobe in my outfit. No, it's not that, boss. It's just... I don't really want to see that shit. Oh, I'm sorry, you're not a homophobe, you're just a picky voyeur. Now kindly shut the hell up and do your damn job. Please, continue. Well, regardless of whether it turns your stomachs or not, this opportunity is all the more valuable to us because of the two participant sexual preference. Other women their wives might forgive, but other men will land them in divorce court. If we can get them on this, we'll have a reliable source of information for years. Now all we have to do is watch and wait for them to show up, then Nate will quietly open the door from the outside when we decide it's an appropriate time to take the pictures. Then all we have to do is burst in and catch them with their pants down. Literally. Shut it! Coach just arrived. Yeah, we see him.
Jumpy bastard, isn't he? Yeah, no shit. All right, guys, this is it. Nate, are you ready? Yeah, just give me the green light. You're clear to proceed. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, am I clear? They haven't reacted, you're fine. Oh god. I think I'm gonna be sick. You're relieved! understand, of course, that we are fully capable of informing your wives of this indiscretion. That is, unless we get a bit of cooperation out of you. Seems fair, doesn't it? Quid pro quo and all that? Listen, I never took French, so how about we dispense with the bullshit? Alright, we can drop the pleasantries if you like. Yeah, much obliged. Here is the situation in which we find ourselves. The two of you would like very much to remain married to your wives. We can let that happen. But first, we want you to give us some information we need. Why is the coach still there? Doesn't that make it like he wanted to win the double? I don't know, but I'm letting any quarterback this week. I don't trust your judgment until something goes seriously to tell him. What do you say, boss? And be sure to photocopy them. We don't want anyone snooping around to find files missing. As for you, why don't you take these capsules and dump the contents into your player's water cooler. What for? What's in them? That's not important. That's not good enough. I assure you, it's not lethal. Nor will it cause any lasting damage. We'll just make your players unable to focus for a couple hours following their consumption of the drug. Sort of like Ritalin, in reverse. So you're telling me you want me to throw the whole season? It's either that or listen to your wife call you a faggot for several hours, followed by a long and rather messy divorce. And then there's the matter of your children. You have two daughters, correct? If you want to keep seeing your girls, it seems a lousy Division II football season is a pretty small price to pay. Good. You're both free to go. Remember what we talked about now? That was easy enough. We send him packing. He goes back to the bookstore parking lot, drives himself home, and he gets the job. Okay, so what did you tell him? Wait, 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 I haven't told him the best part. So the assistant jumped up in surprise and just cracked his head on the ceiling, and a gerbil ran out between the sheets. <laughs> I, that's, that's pretty good, but I don't think it'll come to this one. Oh, I don't know this Hi, Don, let me tell it. Alright, so we're both freshmen, barely in the organization a month, we were both summoned to the director's office for a check. We think we know what the meeting's going to be about. Alex heading for the 
filling out his field reports properly, and I have been covering for him. What can I say? I've never been very good at people. Oh, she was terrible. Anyway, so we got there. Tom Reagan sitting behind his desk, looking into the doorway, staring there for at us. And keep in mind, this is a very large man. He was huge, even compared to football players. To us, of course, he was a giant. We were terrified. We had no idea what Tom Reagan was going to have done with us. Anyway, so he invites us in, tells us to have a seat, and asks us, Do you guys know why you're here? We are, of course, silent, trying to think of excuses. Finally, after what seems like hours of silence, this clown decides that he's going to get cute with our 6'5", 240-pound boss, launches into an impassioned speech. Listen! Boss, if I had known she was your sister, I never would have done that with her in the back of a minivan. I would have had the common courtesy to take her to the bleachers. <laughs> <laughs> the room falls death to the sun. We can hear professors giving lectures six or seven rooms down the hallway. I'm paralyzed for minutes while Alex here stares Tom fucking Ray in the face. I swear, neither of them, neither of them blinked or moved an inch. Finally, for what seems like hours, Tom bursts out laughing. Looks like he's about to weep he's laughing so hard. Alex, of course, laughs right along with him, and I feebly join in, trying not to wet my pants. Anyway, to make a long story short, Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Turn to you. Tom forgot about the paperwork issue and uh, took Alex under his wing. I got to come along for the ride. Within six months, I was head of field ops. First freshman ever to do it. Let's hear it for Alex. Here, here. Of course, Tom didn't find out so much later that Alex had fucked his sister twice. <laughs> I tried, but Jim neglected to mention that he'd covered my ass every step of the way. I'd still be scrubbing toilets if it wasn't for him. You two have been friends for a long time, haven't you? Fifteen years. He saved me from getting my ass kicked in the first grade. Big bad Alex had trouble with a bully, did he? I was a late bloomer, what can I say? Jim had four inches on me back then. Friends ever since? Fifty years. Practically a cliche. Oh, don't say that. Friendship is friendship, loyalty is loyalty. The rest is bullshit. Hey, this motherfucker's got an agent in here. What? How do we know? Ben recognized her from a few surveillance on the voice you were a while back. For her, she knew. Ben and Nate took her to a room upstairs. I can take her now. I'm gonna be right back. I'll be here. You need to sit down. Enough! I owe you for that one, bitch. Go to hell, then, bitch. Shut up, both of you. Ben, outside. Now! Yeah, that's right. Walk away, you pussy! Nate, get him out of here! Now, would you like to tell me what the hell you think you're doing at an ENIA party? <laughs> Let's try this again. Why are you here? And why the hell should I tell you? Because it's my house for one, and you're trespassing. You wouldn't want to get the cops involved, would you? After the work we did on Muller last year, they aren't exactly your best friends anymore. That's chicken shit beef, and you know it. How about we talk seriously for a moment? I'm listening. This is a college party. People invite their friends. Who invite friends and friends? Who invite all of their friends? Pretty soon you got no idea who most everyone is. And you can tell the cops what you like. Even if they do understand the forces at work here, nobody's going to move forward on a party-related trespassing charge, even if they wanted to. So, you can take your empty threats and cram them up your ass. You 
could have made this a lot easier on yourself. My copy of Molar Personnel Files are in that cabinet. What was this girl's name? Susan Lappert. L L L Lappert Susan. Now, let me see. What have we been up to, Susie? Don't do anything stupid. Oh. This is good. Very, very good. It seems that our dear Susie went joyriding in her mother's car, drunk at age 16. The fact that she wrapped the car under trees is neither surprising nor particularly interesting. What's infinitely more shocking is that she trapped her best friend in a steel cage with no hope of escape. The girl, a Monica Thompson, was eventually rescued but died of her injuries several days later. The judge, in light of Susie's very clear remorse, the theretofore spotless record, and an almost shockingly broken home life, gave her five years probation and ordered that the incident be expunged from her permanent record upon its completion. Luckily enough for us, this file was composed a full five months before its completion. Expunged from her permanent record or not, I'm pretty sure that Berkeley will not be particularly inclined to accept her grad school application when they receive word of this. Rest assured, they will. As will every institution to which you apply. You'll be lucky to get your master's online when we're through with that. Unless, of course, you'd like to make your tone a little bit more helpful. If I tell you why I'm here, that stuff stays buried. You have a mole in your outfit. I was sent here to check up on him to make sure he's doing his job right. Name? Rosewood. <laughs> Billy. What's so funny? We read him like a book the moment he walked in. We've been feeding him chicken feed for a year and a half. We've only been running him for a year. Yeah, well, you're not the only one running him. Administration? Not that it's any of your business, but yeah. Jim, get in here, would you? Yeah, what is it? Have Nate escort Miss Lefferts from the premises. Remember what we talked about. And there's no need for your bosses to find out about Billy Rosewood's blown cover. Serious shit. <laughs> yeah, you said it. Now, when you said Billy Rosewood, you didn't mean... Yep, the very same. Ah! What useful intel? Is that old bastard even here? Yeah, of course. Well, where is he? Last time I checked... In the bathroom. Puking. Rejected from Burnham's party. She tell them anything? We don't know yet. She says no. They haven't changed behaviors. Yeah, well, they wouldn't. Burnham's not an idiot. How then do we proceed? Because if nothing has changed, how else can we proceed? Anything else? Not much. They've been pretty quiet since we broke up their little football bribery sting. You forget, of course, about the incident involving our closeted coach and the assistant provost's secretary. Well, sir, I assumed you were pretty well apprised of that. I referred only to the intel that we'd not know about without inside assistance. Fair enough. Has our plan handed us anything useful? Well, I personally spoke to Rosewood the other day. No, 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 not Rosewood, you clown. We already know his number is up. You're right, sir. I'm sorry. Um, our other agent has uh, had a hand in a number of the ENIA's latest missions, both in planning uh, and execution. He's doing, doing rather well. Seriously. Any intel yet? 
Uh, no. No, still in the process of establishing cover, gaining thrust, and so forth. I suppose I'd be foolish to expect anything else at this stage. What are we feeding him through the leak in the assistant provost's office? Oh, not a whole lot. The secretary knows he's being played by both agencies at once and that we have the upper hand. He's playing nervous for their benefit. How long will that work? Burnham's not stupid. Eventually he's going to get suspicious. What will we feed him then? Well, <laughs> then we'll feed him pure, unadulterated lies. I mean, he's got no source on our end that he can corroborate with, so why should we worry? I suppose there's no harm. We're crippling him from the inside as it is. Exactly, sir. I mean, how's he going to know better? He won't even have enough time to have a mole sit at a desk on our end. Even if he did, we'd just use it as another source of disinformation. I mean, every time he tries to gain the upper hand, he digs himself into a deeper hole. <laughs> it's, it's foolproof. <laughs> we'll see about foolproof. Good work, anyway. Thank you, sir. Next time. Until then, Jake. strikes your fancy this evening. I've heard that the duck a la orange is to die for. What about you, Alex? What catches your fancy? Well, the waitress, for one thing. <laughs> I'm kidding. You look gorgeous. Oh, well, stop. I'm serious. You look amazing. Thank you. You know, it's about yourself. I live to serve. Mm -hmm. So, Amy, what do you think of our outfit? Agents up to stuff? Are you suggesting that I gossip about my co-workers? With my boss? How terribly unprofessional. Yes, please, I insist. Well, I like Nate. Nate comes to mind first, does he? I guess there's a first time for everything. Yes, he's quiet. But because of that, he's also an intrusive. He doesn't get in your way, and he gets his job done. He does damn fine work, too. I'm impressed. I don't disagree. He's not head of field operations for nothing. Mm. Nate, more than anybody in the agency, understands the value of discretion. It's hard enough to find that in any profession, but... Field agents as a group are notoriously indiscreet. Are you speaking from personal experience? Did I have a problem keeping a little profile? That's a fair question. Sometimes I would make a move that was too naked, too open, and someone else would have to clean up my mess. But most of my mistakes in the field involved women. Really? For shame! What can I say? I have a weakness. Shall we talk about something else? Oh no, you are not getting off that easy. I want all the gory details. If I must. Uh, my sophomore year, I was supervising a mission in Molar territory. We were out taking photographs of typical MUIA haunts. They were deserted. I was practically falling asleep. As I was dozing off, I heard a knock on my window. I opened my eyes to find the most beautiful blonde woman I had ever seen in my life in person, anyway. She had to be 21, 22, and while I was 19 and I'd been around the block a few times, certain exceptions had to be made. Again, I'm trying to steer us away from this. This is your fault. I know, I know. I never said I was mature at that mm -hmm. age. Get on with it. By your leave, mademoiselle. So, have we decided what we want yet? I'll have a duck a la orange. Alright, and for you, sir? I'll have the same. Very good. So I rolled down my window and asked her if she needed anything. She told me she was lost, needed directions. So I opened the door and she sat down in the passenger seat and unrolled this big map between us. She pointed to where she allegedly thought we were, and she pointed to where she needed to be, with the latter point coinciding with my crotch. <laughs> Again, this is your idea and I will stop whenever you want. <laughs> if you insist. So. I'd been a little hard up lately. Didn't keep things going with Tom Reagan's sister? Afraid not. It'd been a little while, so I uh, sprang to attention almost immediately. She unzipped my pants, and before I knew it, she began to, um... I'm sure you can guess. Mm -hmm. Anyway, by the time she was done, I had completely lost focus on the mission. 
Uh, she scrambled out of the car, and that's when I noticed my team was being jumped by a bunch of molar thugs. I zipped up my pants and got out, but it was too late. I got knocked out with a broken nose. What happened back at the agency? I was demoted for a year. A citation was put in my personal file. But then I got promoted to Chief of Field Ops again in my junior year, and I got the top spot the year after that, so it wasn't too bad. It sure was embarrassing at the time. Well, was she good? <laughs> What was I supposed to say? Oh, well, what was so nice about it? What did you talk about? How did she look? Etc. Etc. She looked incredible. Oh, I see what it was. It wasn't just that it, we we talked about people we know. We talked about things we liked, things we didn't like. We laughed. It was a good time. Glad to hear it went well. Thank you. What goes your love like? <laughs> Didn't you see me burning things up on the dance floor the other night? My phone was just ringing off the damn hook. What about uh, that one girl, um, Jennifer? Yeah, we hang out sometimes. But only when other people are in the room. What can I say, dude? Friend zone is a terrible place. Yesterday I told Billy and Rose that we were about to start a sting operation in all our cafeterias. Oh, what pray tell did the little jackass say about that? Christ, he ate that shit up. It's glorious. The little bastard probably sent that down the pipe to his bosses within minutes. This just in. Our enemies at the ENIA have bugged the meatloaf and spiked the grave. The question is, can the peaches be trusted? <laughs> Why do we do what we do, Alex? Do what? This. Why do we engage in these absurd little spy games with an opponent we don't really know well enough to hate? Tradition provides a meaning to the often meandering purposelessness of college life by allowing us to carve out a niche of influence. You saw the way Williams trembled when we asked for funding. And you had fun. I know you did. How else are we to obtain this measure of control over our lives and our surroundings? By kissing us? You and I both know we'd be terrible at it. We'd get nowhere. The last of all is for the respect. From both our peers and our elders. There's no better way to get both. We're not just mastering the game with two people who can claim to understand. Exactly. And can Quentin Septon say the same? Oh, who's gonna be valedictorian? Nobody gives a shit. It's better to devote yourself to a job like this, enjoy it, and make friends doing it, than spending hours busting your ass to get a goddamn four point, which after you get your first job doesn't mean anything anyway. I mean, look at you. You, more than anyone, have devoted yourself to this trade of ours. I mean, you could have beat that scrawny bastard quitting for the top spot, but instead, devoted yourself to something more interesting and worthwhile. And what happened? You got what, a, a 388? 89. Exactly! And you're going to Stanford for your masters. I think Quentin can blow his four point out his ass.
The answer is Frank Darabont. Are they treating Shawshank as historical fiction? Maybe there's like a grab bag category or something. Ladies and gentlemen, our contestants from Big Rock State College and Lakeland Heights College have been eliminated from this competition. Our remaining contestants, Joe Moore from Elliott Ness College and Brendan Harris of Muller University, are neck and neck heading into the final round. Mr. Moore, the choice of category is yours. Uh, I'll take history, please. Very well. Which English monarch Edward the Confessor. Edward the Confessor. Correct. Mr. Moore, the category? Uh, history again, please. Which Russian general is considered responsible for the successful defense of Stalingrad? Georgi Zhukov. Alex, the kid's too fast. I've seen him in action before. He's not nearly this good. He has help. Are you sure? Can you see anything on the inside? Negative. All right, that means there's somebody out here. Thanks, Rob. Let us know if you see anything else. See anything? No, oh, not a goddamn thing. Shit. Amy, keep up the good work. I think Moeller might have just made this one fair. Quentin Thompson. That's Ampere's law. law. That's Susan Lefferts, the agent we ejected from my house the other night. Uh, Nate, do you remember what she was driving? Yeah. Yeah, I'm looking for the tan Camry now. It's not gonna be easy. series. Is that it? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. Mr. Wemmick. Get lost if you know what's good for you. Jake, nice to see you again. Burnham. I wish I could say the same. It was that blood I saw on your spit there? <laughs> I'll flatter yourself. What are you doing here, Jake? You know we can't abide your presence in the middle of our operation. Oh, yeah? Who says it's yours? Maybe I do. Oh, looks like I got a little from you that time. Stay out of trouble, asshole. Next time I might have to do some damage. To hell with you, Burnham! You're gonna be out of the business sooner than you think. This looks like a barrel of laughs. Oh, stop. It'll be fun. I know it. This kid is crazy. Come on. Get
Where we just got? <laughs> Shut up, you're ruining the moment. Alex, have you ever been in love? Hmm? Have you ever been in love? No. Not once. I've been fond of a few of my girlfriends. She but love. Yeah, love. Why not? To me, being in love means being able to imagine spending the rest of your life with other people. Obviously, I don't want to get married. Not now. And I feel as though you have to be able and willing to give it some thought. But you never have. Uh, I've liked a few of the girls I've dated, and I still wish most of them the best. But no. And now? What about now? As much as I enjoyed that, I don't think I got an answer from you. Uh, I think I'd prefer a different venue. <laughs> Wanna get out of here? You never answered my question. I guess we'll just have to figure it out. Considering our line of work, I think we can count on that. <laughs> True enough. Alex, do you remember on our first date when I told you about how I transferred from Mullen? I remember. And I told you I didn't want to talk about it. I wish to know that. I know. But I think you have the right to know it now. In my sophomore year, I started dating a senior. I felt so privileged, so mature. It was stupid. No, well, it wasn't stupid. No, it was. After the formal, we went back to his car. I thought he was just going to drive me home. We'd had a nice enough time, but it was getting late and I was starting to get sleepy. But my boyfriend had other ideas. He sat in the front seat for a minute, but then he reached over and tried to make a move on me. I started pushing him away, telling him I wasn't ready, but he persisted. I gave him a big shove, and he got angry. So he held me down and started reaching under my dress to pull away my underwear. Lucky for me, the formal was just ending and people were still leaving the country club. A girl heard me screaming and sent her boyfriend in to help me. He brought a few of his friends, and pretty soon they had opened the car door and pulled my boyfriend off me. Thank God. They worked him over a bit, but the cops showed up pretty quickly. Within a week, a judge had issued a restraining order. Six, six months later, that bastard was serving a four-year prison sentence. Hey, that's all over. You're with me now, okay? I love you, Alex. I love you too. Everything's gonna be fine. I'm here. Hey. Yeah. It's one of the 
to an end that's so cozy. The same as now. We've been all over each other for a week and a half. How the hell did I hear about this? I don't know. The boss hasn't made any attempt to hide it. Is that his goddamn briefing? Looks like it. Isn't that a serious fucking breach of protocol? Do my business dealing with that shit. If you got more questions, ask Jim. Alex has always been a constant professional. In the workplace, anyway. Why in God's name would he be breaking protocol like that? What purpose could it serve? That won't work. Director's briefing, director's briefing. Ha. Huh. Once delivered, the contents of the briefing are to be shared with no one. This is not a matter subject to the director's discretion, and he or she must adhere to this regulation at all costs. So why is he letting her see the briefing? She just got her hooks in it, is all. He wants to include her in everything, and he probably also trusts her judgment. It's not hard to figure out. And what did you say? Looks into him. No, after that. Includes her in everything. <laughs> With the exception of routine surveillance, she's run every op we've had since three weeks after her arrival. Why is she running so much of our work? There's something wrong about this. She can't be that qualified. I'm heading to the records room. Have a phone, will you? Yeah, sure. Whatever. Something wrong? Not at all. Just took me longer than I expected to get out of there. All right. So, what do you have for me? The head of the agency accesses all of their files on the high security level by entering the code delivery, and that key is broken into a key jack. Then uses that key as that day's login. The key gen changes every 24 hours. So the code delivered in each day's briefing is different. Only the director is meant to have access to that code, but I stayed behind in his office for a few minutes today and stole the key from his terminal. That, coupled with the code that I stole from today's briefing, should allow us to crack the key gen's algorithm. Letting their system alarm yet. Phillips? I'll ask again, is something wrong? Why do we do it? I'm sorry, Phillips. Did you just ask me why we ran this op? Yes. Yes, I fucking did. Why? Don't you realize what we've done? What you've done for the agency? I know what I've done. But how about you tell me what you think I've done? You've secured our triumph. You've broken the back of the ENIA for the foreseeable future. 
They won't be able to make a move without our knowing about it ever again. I'll tell you what I've done. I betrayed the trust of a man I care about. A man who, on his worst day, is worth ten of you on your best. I manipulated him, and when the getting was good, I took what I came for and ran. He played with his emotions and his trust. And for all he knows, I was worthy. For all he knows, I'm still worthy of that trust. And it makes me fucking sick. Your very presence and my complicity in this twisted goddamn game makes me nauseous. <laughs> Why'd you do it? What? What made you give me this? Or this? Self-righteous bullshit aside, you went through with it because you didn't feel any remorse. This was just a job to you for the duration. And just because you've convinced yourself otherwise doesn't mean that anything's changed. You're no different from me. We're both cold and calculating in our every move. That's why you were picked, for our similarities and not for our differences. You planned this whole op. Burnham had a history of mistakes involving the opposite sex, and you used that behavior to your advantage. Do us both a courtesy. Don't try laying all responsibility in my feet. After all, it's not my fault you fucked him. We don't have to worry about that anymore. Because I quit. Condensing these. This is way too much extraneous bullshit. Does nobody knock anymore? I'm sorry, sir, but I thought you'd want to see these immediately. I don't know what the hell you think is so damn important you can just barge. When were these taken? Yesterday. A few minutes after you left the office. They were just printed up about an hour ago. I didn't see them until just now. What are we gonna do, boss? Where is she? Sir, I don't think we need to handle it. Where? I'm not sure. I don't think she came into the office today. Sir, sir, what are we supposed to do here? Why exactly did you meet the Chief of Molar Intelligence yesterday afternoon? Alex, I can explain that. Why, pray tell, did you meet Sam fucking Norton for coffee minutes after I gave you a goodbye kiss? What possible reason could you have had for doing that? It's not how it seems. Don't! You met my goddamn arch enemy at that cafe where you divulged information apparently so valuable and interesting that he wrote it down as you spoke. Tell me, did he flip you while you were working for me, or did you come in as a snitch? Yes. No, stupid question. You came from Moeller, of course you were a plant from the beginning. Alex, please. What was the point? Fuck me until I handed over the information that you wanted, is that it? Alex, I didn't know you when I came in. I didn't know we would end up like this. You have to believe me. Uh, believe you? What a joke! What possible reason have you given me to ever take you at your word again, ever? I, I know you have no reason, but I need you to believe me anyway. You'll have to live without it. Was it even true? Was what true? Don't ask me that. You know what. Oh my God. Good. Then this was an entirely meaningless. Alex, wait, please! I meant it. You know. 
that I love you. I meant that more than I've ever meant anything in my entire life. How did I get caught up in this? Why couldn't I see it coming? How could I be so stupid? She couldn't have done it alone. There's no way she could have buried all of this without inside help. So, who else decided to stab me in the back? Oh, I thought so. Shit! Alex! Thank God you're here! You do not want to fuck with me right now, Ben. You can't imagine what a bad idea that is. Trust me on it. I know what you're thinking, and I can explain everything. <laughs> I've already heard that once today. It didn't work so well then, either. I'm being set up. Prove it. These will absolve me, I assure you. I take it from your rather forceful greeting that you've already heard the first bit of bad news. I'm sorry, boss, you two seemed close. Anyway, I saw how busy she was and how many of our operations she ran or set up, not to mention your breach of protocol. Believe me, Alex, I have no intention of shaking you down. That part can stay between us, and in fact, I'd rather it did. Of course, I'm, I'm sorry, go on. Well, all of this got me to thinking. Wasn't there something in her history that made all of this strange? I knew I had written up the report on her, but I couldn't for the life of me remember what I'd written. I read the report posted online, and I knew almost immediately that I hadn't written it. So I dug up the original in the records room yesterday, and... I've spent all my time since then racking my brain for answers. I fucked up, Alex. Pretty bad. I should have remembered this shit so I could have stopped some of this from happening. To hell with it, Ben. She came from Moeller. I knew that. I knew I had a weakness for the fairer sex. The point is, I'm the director of this agency. Responsibility for these messes falls on my shoulders. I should have been paying more attention. The question that remains, then, is... Who buried my report? That is the question before us, yes. Rosewood? <laughs> that asshat couldn't tie his own shoelaces without help. There's no way he could pull off something like this. I you know, I just hoped one of our friends wasn't involved with one of these cocksuckers. I think I've got more to worry about than you do, Ben. You can't be serious. This isn't a conclusion I've reached lightly or in a hurry. But you have to approach this logically. Who could have replaced the report between the point where you wrote it and the point where I read it? Long? Listen, let's drop the bullshit. Why am I here? <laughs> no way to talk to your boss, though, is it? Watch it, Lord. Don't 
Don't fuck around. I'm not in the mood. Very well, then. Straight to the point. Well. All right. Here's our problem. Phillips is exposed. What? She's out. She blew up at our meeting yesterday, and I had her followed. A few hours ago, she met up with Burnham, and they had a shouting match. He left her alone and crying in the park. You have nothing to worry about, of course. You covered your tracks, didn't you? Pinned an unbent Doyle, yeah. Right. Doyle. Listen, we think he might know something, too. He, uh, he left your campus at the end of classes yesterday and never came back. Yeah, what of it? I heard he was sick. Alright, I see where you're going. You got wise and stayed out of the office for a I'm sure that someone might ruin things with him again. It's of no consequence. I deleted his report, shredded all the copies in the office, replacing them with my own sanitized version. All the copies? Shit. What? Records. Doyle might have really copied down records before I could get it. <sighs> Grab the fucking things five minutes after you wrote them. I didn't even think about it. God damn it, Smith. You might have put this one tits up in a real hurry. Fuck you, Sam. What? Don't you dare talk to me like an employee. Don't even fucking think about it. You and I both know there's only one reason why I'm here. You're a whore for power and you'll do anything to get ahead? Oh. The nearly masochistic capacity for attracting <laughs> physical pain, don't you, Sam? to destroy. Work together is finished. Done more than enough to earn your silence. Shut up. It's probably date stamped. Couldn't have been backdated or anything. It was written exactly when Ben says it was. Which means you wrote this one. Which begs the question, why? Or more importantly, how long were you working for Moeller? Six months, maybe a bit less. I didn't have a choice. Oh, really? Yes, really. I don't cast aside fifteen year friendships for nothing. Well, it sure as hell looks like it. Enlighten me. About a year ago, when I was taking the GRE, it was for the 340. I remember. What I never told you is that the proctor found six kids in the room, passing answers to each other by phone. I left my phone in my pocket and on, because I had forgotten it was there. It was a stupid fucking thing to do, but it was also impossible to fix once testing began. The proctor stopped the exam and discovered that I, too, had a phone. He figured that I was part of a pack of cheaters and fully intended to destroy my aunt's if she didn't booklet. I could tell how well I was doing it. And I didn't want word to get out that I had cheated, especially since I'd had nothing to do with it in the beginning. So I paid him off. You what? I bribed this son of a bitch. I wasn't thinking straight. I panicked. Six months later, after I got my scores mentioned in the paper, and even having forgotten the deal I made, I got a phone call from Sam Norton. Pretty soon, my future was on the line. So you sacrificed our friendship and everything we worked for for a goddamn test score? It's not that simple. It wasn't just the score, Alex. And news of this gotten out, I wouldn't be welcome at any school. Period. The 340 would have made my performance especially suspect. The stain of cheating would follow me everywhere. 
working a dead-end office job for the rest of my career. Besides, everything we worked for? What? Come on, Alex. I spent the better part of my college career cleaning up your mess. I made you look good, damn good. But everyone also knew that I was the source of the best planning and analysis. Her input was crucial, sure. But I was doing the most work. And the best of it, too. What did I get for it? Freshman year, you get handed chief field ops. I didn't become chief analyst until last year. When it came time to make a new agency director, our boss looked over your fuck ups and gave you his chair. You got a blowjob on agency time, and you became my boss! So this wasn't just about your GRE exam. There's one very simple reason I got promoted to director and you didn't do it. You were being coward. You see all the little details, but oh so often the larger picture made to grasp it. Take the GRE incident. Sure, you made the right tactical move at the time, but it was a strategic catastrophe in the long run. You're, you're smarter than I am, Jim. Everybody knows that. And I never meant to be your boss. We ran the office like a team. Everybody followed your orders just as readily as they followed mine. I relied on you every step of the way. I'm sorry if it didn't seem like that. Alex, I'll have my letter of resignation on your desk tomorrow morning. Alex, I'm sorry. You wanted to see me, boss? Have a seat. Ben, you, more than anyone else, helped get to the root of this problem. Yes, you made a mistake or two, but you doggedly pursued the truth when you thought things were going wrong, and you didn't stop until you told me what I needed to hear. Thank you, sir. My behavior, on the other hand, wasn't as praiseworthy. I allowed a friend to bury a mole right beneath our noses. I fell in love with that mole, and I breached protocol and showed her files that only I was meant to see. No, sir, if I had no, Ben, I told you. I'm the director. The responsibility for this mess lies with me. Which is why I'm tendering my resignation. But, sir, nothing was lost to the enemy. We, we fixed the problem before it got out of hand. What happened was I got lucky. I had someone I could trust there to clean up my mess. You fixed this problem. Which is why you should have my job. You're better at it. Me? Effective immediately. Congratulations, Director Doyle. Thank you, sir. The agency has been notified. If I may make a few recommendations before I leave. Of course, of course. Keep Nate on as the head of field ops. Keep your ears open. He's got a lot of useful things to say when he feels like opening his mouth. He and I will be graduating in the next few months, so mine him for information for as long as you can, because we won't be here next year. As for Chief Analyst, I'd recommend Justin. He's a little green, but there's not much you can do for that right now. He'll be fine. Mm -hmm. And for God's sake, fire Billy Rosewood.
Planning on leaving without saying goodbye? You're gonna miss me, you old son of a bitch. Place won't be the same. Tell me about it. Take care, Nate. Yeah, I'll do my best. You were right. This is Simon is BS. Well, not much we can do about it. Hey, is that our boss? Not anymore.